Wow. I've been, I've been thinking about breathing lately. And as many of you know, I've, I've really found a, a deeper appreciation for breathing. Isn't it interesting? Breathing is one of those things. You can be seated if you want to. It's one of those things that we just, we just do. We don't even think about it. We just do. And, and as I've been studying because of a relationship with someone that I'm going to introduce to you soon, as I've been studying the science of breathing, it brought me back to the story of Genesis because there, there's a connection. And I want you to re-envision the story of Genesis. And if you study it, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. It was void without form. It was formless. And it said darkness was over the face of the deep. The deep that is implied in that passage is waters. So the deep is it's water. So darkness is over the face of the deep. In other words, there's nothing there, nothing there but water. That's it. And then it says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep, or the face of the water. So the Spirit of God, when there was nothing, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And that word that was translated spirit is the Hebrew word ruach, and it literally means the breath. So before creation, before anything that was created was created, God's breath was hovering over it, getting ready to create something. It's, it's right there. Study it. And then it says, out of this, so, so, so the spirit of God, the breath of God, is hovering over the waters. And then the spirit, the breath of God, speaks, breathes, sings, let there be, and creation happens. So breath, the breath of God, preceded creation. In fact, one could argue that the breath of God created creation. Visualize it. There is nothing happening but God's breath. And creation takes place. And then... The capstone of creation, you, you know the story, the heavens and the earth and the dry land and the ground and the seas and all, you know, all this, everything, the stars and, and, and the animals and the birds and all this. And then, and then, and then it, it gets to us. The crowning jewel of what God created. He creates us. And then that's it, right? No. Before we could fully be that same breath... <sighs> that was the impetus for everything that God created. Before we could be us, what does he do? God breathes, it says it in Genesis, he breathes that breath, the breath of life. And at that point, man becomes a living soul. But what I have missed, I got that, but what I missed was not that I was breathing, but what I was breathing. Are you tracking with me? I get that I'm breathing, but do I understand what I'm breathing? Because the same thing I'm breathing is the same thing that our creator used to create. Come on. That's why I say, you know, in, in moments of... of, of of exhortation and moments of truth that say as long as you've got breath you've got a shot and I'm not just saying that to say as long as you are alive you have an opportunity no it's it's bigger than that I'm saying I want you to recognize the power of your breath it is the same breath it's the rock the same breath that God used to create everything it's in you right he didn't give you your little breath. It doesn't say that. No, he gives you his breath. 
And that's why, and studies are showing now, and I know many of you uh, have studied breath work, and, and if you have it, you should. And there are many studies that, that show you that if you breathe right, you can actually heal yourself. Of course you can. Why? Because it's God's breath. It's the breath of life. I want to do an exercise with you really quickly. It's one that I do when, when I'm a little frustrated. Anybody ever been frustrated before? Uh, you know, don't, don't lie. You can't lie here. Don't do it. You can go out to the doors. You can not here. Anybody frustrated today? Come on, California traffic. Anybody frustrated on your way over here, right? Trying to find a parking space. Anybody? Come, let's just keep honest. I am not proclaiming to be an expert on breakfast. That's not there. One day I will be, but I am not. But there is a particular technique that is called 478. That's what I call it, 478, that helps me. My own breath helps me. In fact, I, I took on a, um, <laughs> a task and, um, and that task was so taxing that my blood pressure went up. I'd never had high blood pressure ever in my life. But uh, this particular task got on my last uh, nerve. Anybody ever been there? Your last nerve. And my blood pressure went up. And so I'm, you know, I didn't want to start taking medicine or anything like that. And you know, and again, that's not a, if that's your thing, do it. I, I completely get it. I understand that. But I wanted to try to find some other remedies. And so I learned about this technique, 478. So we're going to do it right now. I'm not saying you're stressed. I'm not saying that at all. But I want you to feel the power of the gift that God has given you called breath. We're going to have an incredible time tonight. There's going to be information and revelation and innovation and philanthropy and it's going to be a good sweet blessed night we're going to have a gift for you you're going to be better i promise you because you were here me and my friend and partner literally had tears in our eyes thinking about the reality of us getting better and you'll see what i mean so we've got a wonderful evening but i want us to start with this breathing exercise and so it goes like this we breathe in through our nose for four seconds. Not yet. Don't do it yet. But we breathe in through our nose for four seconds. We hold our breath for seven seconds. And then we release our breath for eight seconds. Now, here's how you can remember this. And this, for me, I, I like numbers. Numbers mean things to me. I believe that God uses numbers. And so for me, taking in, as I'm taking in air through my nose for four seconds, four for me represents totality the four corners of the earth north east south and west so i'm taking in watch this the totality of my life everything that i'm thinking about everything that i'm going through everything that i'm concerned about everything that i'm praying about everything you know the scriptures say cast all your cares upon him so i'm taking in I, I, i'm being one with everything that has to do with me and i'm taking all of that in right so four represents totality Okay, so I'm taking it all in. And then I hold it for seven seconds. Now, we all know what seven means. Seven is the number of completion, right? Perfection, completion. So for me, what holding it in for seven seconds is I'm taking everything in and I'm holding it for seven seconds. Watch this, allowing God a chance to perfect it. And there's a passage that says that he will perfect that which concerns you. He'll perfect it. So I'm taking it in for four seconds. I'm holding it for seven seconds, trusting that God knows my needs. God knows everything that I'm facing. I'm just walking out what God has already worked out. Are you tracking with me? And so I take it in for seven seconds. I hold it because in that seven seconds, I'm trusting God to perfect that which concerns me. And then once God perfects it, eight is the number of new beginnings. Come on, somebody. Fresh starts, new beginnings. And I'm releasing it out into my new beginning. 
transformation can happen not just once, not just once a week or no transformation can happen. I believe if you breathe right, you know how the scriptures say our outer man is perishing, but our inner man is being renewed day by day. It's being renewed day by day. Renew. I believe that breathing done properly is supposed to bring renewal. Y'all ready to do it? And so we're going to do this together. I'm a count. I get excused from doing it because I'm a count for you. <laughs> Y'all ready? Close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to gather the totality of everything that's in your, your mind and your heart right now. Ask the Spirit of God to bring to your remembrance things. To all of you, all of your concerns, your joys, your fears, everything. In just a second, we're going to take it in. Just, just, but I want you to think on it first. What's the first thing that comes to mind that you're concerned about? What's the second thing and the third thing? What's that thing that you feel like is too big for you? That's what we're going to take in. You got it in your head? You ready? On three, we're going to breathe deeply through our nose. Don't worry about who's looking. Nobody's looking because everybody's eyes closed. Think about it. Now we're going to take it in on three and hold for four seconds. One, two. We're going to take it in for four seconds. One, two, and three. In through your nose deeply. Now hold it for seven seconds. Two, three, God is perfecting it. Four, five, six, seven. Slowly release for eight seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Somebody's already feeling a release. I felt it before we even got to eight. Did you feel that? But we're not finished. We're going to do it three times. In through the nose for four seconds. Come on. Deep. One, two, three, four. And hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Release slowly. One. through the nose. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three. And we're going to let it all out. And release. One, two, three, four. Amen. How's that feel? <laughs> You're like, I want to do it again. <laughs> no, you keep, you keep doing it. Something is happening. Remember, this is a gift from God. And we're going to get better and better and better at honoring our breath. One of the things that I've learned is that when you value something, you honor it. I don't think, hmm, I, I don't think that God can give you a greater blessing than breath. Sometimes we're praying, God, give me this, give me this, give me peace. And what if God is saying, your peace is in your breath? Well, God, give me, give me innovation, right? Give, give, give me strategy, give me clarity. What if all of that happened if we learned how to steward the breath? God, God, I, I just, I'm stressed out. I don't know what to do. I need clarity. What if clarity comes through you learning how to breathe and get still and become one with yourself and with God? I have learned that oftentimes what we desire is present already in stillness. Are you tracking with me? And what keeps us from the place of stillness? I'm, I'm over my time. I'm sorry. What keeps us from the place of stillness? Cray-cray. 
being frazzled. And think about it. When you're frazzled, next time you're frazzled, I want you to just check your breath. Because breathing is something that happens, you know, subconsciously. You know, it's, we're not even thinking about it. It's happening. But the next time you're frazzled, check your breath. I bet it's not deep and calm and steady and peaceful. We're going to honor our breath. And I think that one of the ways, one of the, the best ways to honor our breath is to understand our breath. Is to understand breathing. And that's what tonight is about. It's going to be amazing. Anybody excited to be here? Me too. Me too. This is the beginning of something beautiful. I, I want to introduce someone that, that, I, that I met. And it was so funny. I, I was, we have a mutual friend. And the mutual friend said, you, you've got to meet Dr. David Edwards. He's a Harvard scientist. And she was like, he's an incredible human being. She's like, he, he's probably going to win a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm like, really? And so he was coming to San Diego to speak at a conference, the Life Itself Conference, hosted by um, Sanjay Gupta and uh, another gentleman. His name escapes me, but another fantastic human being, CNN sponsored it. I'm mean, just a powerful thing. And, and I had just some brilliant, incredible people whose sole mission is to change the world, literally. To change the world. To, to, they, they believe in the gift that God has given them to innovate and create and to use whatever means and resource and tools to make the world better. So anyway, I had a schedule conflict. I was going out of the country and I just felt like I needed to shift my schedule to be at this conference to meet Dr. David Edwards. I go to that conference. I learn about what he's been doing and what he's been building. And I was blown away and I knew that it was purpose. And we have been, and we, are, we both are extremely busy, extremely busy, but purpose, I believe divine purpose has brought us together. And so I wanna tell you a little bit about him. I'm gonna just give you just a few accolades that, that are connected to him, but there's so much more. Typically a great person, you can't sum up in a bio, you can't sum up in their accolades, but but I just want to give you a few before I invite Dr. Edwards to the stage. But he was the youngest National Academy engineer in history. He's a member of three National Academies in the United States and in France. He's the winner of two Time Magazine Inventions of the Year. Two Time Magazine Inventions of the Year. Come on, somebody. That's massive. He's authored two applied mathematics textbooks. And he's an award-winning author of books on blue sky innovation. He is a philanthropist, a humanitarian, a human being, someone that I've truly grown to love. Do me a favor and help me welcome my friend and my brother, Harvard scientist and inventor, Dr. David Edwards. Give him a one welcome. <laughs> We're here. Uh, this, well, I've never <laughs> been introduced like that or actually experienced you quite like this. Amazing. Thank you so much well, for having me here. I'm so glad you're here. Um, you are a blessing. I'm going to make him uncomfortable, but you, you really are a blessing. One of the things that fascinated me about you was your audacious, the, 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 you, you, the, you had the audacity to believe that you can change the world through what you have studied, um, what you have tested, and ultimately what you have invented. Talk to us a little bit about your heart posture and your work. Just, I, I really want to know, I, I know what you do, and we're gonna, I'm going to inform those of you who don't know what you do, but, but I want to get more into the, the why you yeah. do it. So tell us about your work and why you do it. Well, that's such an open-ended question. So let me say that, um, you know, honestly, just to go back many years, I hated school. You know, I ended up teaching at Harvard University, but I really didn't know what I would do with my life. And I ended up becoming really focused on applied mathematics, and I thought that that would be my life. And I was introduced to someone who is at MIT, and he 
kind of asked me to do something that you don't normally ask an academic to do, and that was just to kind of look out, forget about what your advisor has done. Well, we look out at the world and think about a problem that you might solve and then figure it out. And that was such a crazy thought. He gave me a few papers at the time. This was many years ago. For many of you, you may not even have been born, but in the late 90s, the big, probably the biggest project in healthcare was to eliminate injections for insulin and, and to actually inhale insulin. And so that would be pretty amazing. And, and he gave me a few papers on that topic and it led to a paper and it, it led to you know, investors coming and saying, would you like to start a company for inhaled insulin? Which was like, I was super frightened about that idea. I'd never imagined doing anything other than math. And, and, and yet it was super empowering to think, well, maybe we could do something. And the, the company happened and then it like sold really quickly and it had a huge impact on my life. Um, this is the late 90s. And it was not all positive, honestly. And so it was, sort of gave me this notion that, and I say this to all of the young people here and all of us actually, this, I, there's, nothing, there's nothing more valuable today than what we call intellectual property. What's in your brain? It, about yeah, 20, 25 years ago, literally, it, there was this moment where the most valuable resource on the planet became intellectual property. It's actually what's in your brain. And by now, it's just massively true. Here in LA, if you look at film, the film industry, it's really intellectual. Anyway, so what's going on in your brain is huge, right? And so the seeing that that could have a big impact was an enormous thing. But it didn't really change the world, you know? And so we ended up having a drug that came out three years ago for inhaled L-DOPA for treating our Parkinson's, but that was 18 years later. And so I actually made a lot of money and, and my friends made a lot of money. And, uh, and, and eventually something came out, but it was pretty, um, I was, you know, 9-11 happened soon after that and I felt wrong. <laughs> I felt really wrong about it actually. I don't think I was alone actually. So the Gates Foundation started, there's a number of us who just, anyway. So fast forward, I'm a lot older now and I've had for the last 20 years a chance to invent a lot of things and try a lot of things and it has all led to this conversation here. You know, and again, something to maybe all of, the, all of you, but all of the young people here in the audience, um, there's nothing as compelling as following your heart and actually kind of asking yourself at every moment whether you're doing something new, it doesn't matter, right? It does not just matter for me, but it might matter for other people and, and maybe a lot of other people. And, and might it last not just tomorrow or the next day for a long period of time? Could you actually do something that matters for a lot of people for a long period? That's very, if you can kind of answer that maybe, then something that I've learned is that you'll find a lot of people to help you. And there'll be many moments where you're like on the edge. You go, it's not going to work. And people come and help you. And, and so that brings me back to you. So I just want to say something about your, your pastor. Um, you know, science and invention is important. Um, but it doesn't really change the world. Actually, our world's in really bad shape, as you probably all know. And it's not that we don't know what to do. It's just people are not doing it right? And there's a lot of us, right? And we're just all not doing the right thing. And so how do you do the right thing? It takes inspired leaders who are trusted, who help people uh, do new things. And so anyway, you probably weren't expecting that as the final statement um, in answer to your question, but I think that um, I'm very lucky to have met you, and I'm really happy to be here tonight, so thank you. Oh, thank you so much, David. And Welcome. You, you said a lot. You know there were about three sermons in what he said, right? He talked about purpose, doing something that matters. Uh, he talked about how when you um, align with your purpose, how the resources literally uh, will show up, both um, human resources and financial resources. So that, that's powerful. So this is, you can tell all of your, your friends that you, you preached a message here in L.A. at <laughs> I, I one. I think I did. Um, You've been studying for the last 25 years 
um, respiratory health, the respiratory system. I'm, I'm going to mess up the names and everything because I'm not a scientist. He is. Um, what, has, what have you found and, um, that the average person doesn't know about the respiratory system uh, and, and, um, and breathing in? Just what have you found? So, Firstly, that was an amazing exercise you had us all do, so thank you. And, and so I'm going to go a little bit beyond that. I'm just going to tell you all some, a few things that will probably be, hopefully, intuitive, uh, but you may not think about. So when you, well, first thing to know is that by far the biggest surface you've got with the outside environment is, is the surface in your lungs. You've got about a tennis court worth of surface area inside your lungs, and it's all wet. And it's made to absorb oxygen with every breath you take. And, and so it is super fragile. And so it's wet, it's fragile, it's a lot of surface area. So you can imagine a really bad thing for that surface is to have dry air that's dirty, right? It's like, I want oxygen, <laughs> it's all wet. And if I have dry air, I'm gonna lose water, I'm gonna, I wouldn't survive actually. And so the, it's gotta stay wet and it's gotta stay clean. And so how did we survive, right? We were like in caves and bringing fires, and how did that work? And so actually, there's this, from the tip of your nose, this gets to nasal breathing, to about here at the end of your windpipe, there's a region we call the upper airways. And this region, from the nose, through your larynx, we're going to talk about singing quite a bit tonight because singers know a lot about what I'm saying, right through your windpipe, so that region is supposed to clean out about 95% of all the stuff you breathe in your lungs, cleans it out, and it humidifies the air. So it becomes perfectly humid when it goes, that's all supposed to happen between here and here. Now, back when we lived along the equator and near the ocean, um, and we were pretty sedentary and breathing through our nose, kind of like what you just showed us to do, that was great. and our our, actually, our upper airways work super well, and they clean out all those particles, it lands on mucus, it goes to our mouth, and so it's great. Um, it humidifies, but you and I, uh, we breathe dry air, it's cold, we breathe through our mouths a lot. That's a problem, because if you don't go through your nose, it doesn't humidify. Wait a minute, Dave. Breathing through your mouth is a problem? Breathing through your mouth is a problem, really. The mouth was made for eating, the nose was made for breathing. And now, it's good that you can kind of um, breathe also through your mouth, and we all do a lot, but that's the problem. And so the, and the reason is that air gets to your larynx and it didn't really get humidified. And so you can get, and so there's a young man we'll see here uh, later this evening uh, we had a chance to talk to earlier and uh, probably a lot of you have the experience of waking up in the morning, you have a really dry mouth. So what happens is when you sleep, you're, you're actually obligate nose breathers, but when your nose gets plugged up, uh, you start to breathe through your mouth, and then you wake up in the morning, you're really dry. So anyway, the upper airways are supposed to humidify. Because we breathe through our mouth a lot, because it's really dry air, we're drying out a lot. The other thing to know is that when you dry out, that clearance of particles ceases to happen. And so suddenly, you breathe in about a billion particles a day. And while suddenly, when they don't clean out, they just hang in there. And then the risks for allergies and asthma and COPD and influenza and COVID-19 all go up. And so science has shown for the last 30 years that as you breathe dry air, the risks of COVID-19 or the risks of asthma or allergies, they all go up. Sleep apnea all goes up. So. Dry airways combined with dirty air is toxic. So the one thing, and I guess I'll end here by just saying that uh, we're in a world of really dirty air, and some of us actually are breathing much dirtier air than other people. One thing that we can do that makes a really big difference is to keep ourselves hydrated well, drink enough water and hydrate your upper airways so that your immune system works as it's supposed to. So that's kind of the main message here, and uh, yeah, it's what we've really discovered. No, this is good. We got so much to talk about. We, we are in this, you know, we, we used to talk about, we had this term called like this post-COVID, like post-COVID, post-COVID, but here's the thing. 
there's, I don't think that there's a such thing as post-COVID. I think, I think that not just COVID, but other things, other you know, respiratory diseases, there are things popping up all the time. I don't think it's going anywhere, which means that if we're going to thrive and do well and be healthy, we're going to have to employ some major lifestyle changes. Like, for real, you know, I, I think, you know, now some of you probably have hand sanitizer in your, your pocket or your purse, something like that. You, did, you didn't have that five, ten years ago unless you were really, you know, but the times caused us to, to smarten up, you know, and to, to make changes. And I think that, and I, and I stressed this probably about a month ago, because we're in this time where there, there's so many diseases out there, there's so much going on, by the time we wrap our head around one thing, something else is happening, we have to really, really be committed to doing things differently so that we can survive. And that's why, this is really important. You know, when I sit back and, you know, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor among many other things, but I'm a pastor and I feel like I have an obligation to, to speak to the holistic wellness of those that God has sent to me. Like, I, I am just as passionate about um, your health as I am about your soul. I, I really am. How can I be passionate about you and not be passionate about your health? I'm passionate about your relationships. I'm passionate about you as a business person, as an employee, as an entrepreneur. I'm passionate about all these. I'm passionate about the whole of your life because I'm passionate about the whole of my life. And so for me, when it comes to this new way of really adapting to the world that we're living in, there's certain things that it was imperative that I bring to you, certain, certain uh, insights and information that I've been exposed to that I believe will help you to live longer and to live better, and this is one of them. And um, David, you, you invited some friends. Yeah, so actually, Tori and I met in San Diego a couple months ago, and then we had a conversation about a month ago. And uh, you um, made a really generous act that we're going to talk a little bit about later in deciding to come back together tonight. It's amazing. Um, I did invite some friends. Um, and, and one of the reasons, um, and it's just a couple minutes of friends, but what we're going to talk about, what we are talking about, is sort of really simple, actually. Um, we're going to talk about water and salt and the air we breathe. Uh, so I have a handful of friends, and I'm going to tell you who they are, and then we're going to watch a video of them. Uh, so the first uh, person is a really brilliant immunologist. Her name is Padmini Pillai. And Padmini... Uh, she studied at Yale University under Akiko Iwasaki. And Akiko is a, one of the pioneers who's pushing for the WHO to recognize that if we would just breathe humid air, actually we'd be significantly less vulnerable to infectious disease. Padmini is now at MIT, and she works with my former advisor, uh, Bob Langer, and uh, so she calls herself an immunoengineer now. She sings, and she sings really, really well. So she's sung at Carnegie Hall, and, and she, among other things, uh, sings in support of Angelique Kijo, uh, and she's a PhD immunologist, and we're going to hear from her, and she's going to talk about why dry air is such a challenge, and she's going to talk about health access. One of the main topics we'll talk here about is that access to clean air is not even. You're going to hear from Denny Osiello, and Denny was the number one director of Pfizer until just a couple years ago, and he had headed uh, medicine, the chief of medicine at MGH, Mass General Hospital in, at Harvard Medical School. And he's going to talk about science. And why did science not figure this out before, <laughs> right? It's like, why? So in fact, he'll describe, he's a major expert in hydration. Uh, and, and so he'll talk about how everything's sort of come together here. And the pandemic, by the way, has had quite a big impact. Uh, we're going to not just hear from scientists. So we're going to hear from uh, an LA native, um, Alex 
Guerrero. So Alex, you may know, um, is the uh, body coach of Tom Brady and TB12 and, and uh, works with some of the most iconic athletes in the world. And he uh, grew up in inner city LA um, with breathing issues. And, and he, uh, his story is super compelling and he'll share that and why airway hydration is such a big deal. You know, the two uh, groups of people who are most on the front line for feeling the acute effects of drying out are, I mentioned singers and athletes. So we'll, we'll talk a lot more about that in a little bit. And then you're going to hear from Anna Flavia Zwim, who is Brazilian, and she, uh, for many years, led uh, vocal uh, performance at NYU, works a lot with Broadway singers. And uh, she was here with me in L.A. Uh, several months ago with Mickey Guyton. So you're going to see a little uh, uh, amazing moment with Mickey. Mickey, uh, so a number of singers now are beginning to um, hydrate their upper airways. Uh, and uh, Mickey was really at the front edge of that. Just before the Super Bowl as national anthem, uh, she discovered Fend, and you'll see a moment where she kind of uh, uh, discovered that. And so anyway, um, we're going to hear from all of them and uh, just a couple minutes, and, and hopefully it will give you a context. This is a little bit of a nerdy moment, uh, but it ends with a really nice moment with Mickey, just two minutes. Does that work? It's good. As an immunologist and a singer, I know the importance of breathing clean and hydrated air. Health is one of the biggest challenges we are facing as humanity. Humidity, salt and water movement, the nature of mucus, the nature of uh, regulation of the glottis, for example, all of those things which have been studied relatively extensively in isolation are now coming to bear in a more holistic way for understanding the relationship between a variable environment, the upper airway, and ultimately the well-being of the lungs. Breathing dry air impairs our immune system's ability to apprehend and eliminate airborne viruses. In America, our wealth, skin color, gender, and zip code play a huge role in our health, particularly when it comes to the quality of the air we breathe. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and I um, grew up and lived with my parents who were in the dry cleaning business. Uh, you know, had dry cleaners throughout most of the inner city area. The air wasn't uh, great. I remember times where we actually had to miss school. They'd give us um, smog alert days where, you know, they'd call and tell you today's a smog alert day so we wouldn't actually go to school on those days. So as I got older, I realized that I wouldn't be able to take in a lot of air without really coughing all the time. Or if I got into laughter, if someone said something and it caused me to laugh, I would actually cough through the laugh. So getting into my profession and dealing with uh, professional athletes, and fortunately I've had uh, both the privilege and blessing of working with some of the most iconic athletes in the world, we came to understand the value of hydration, how important hydration was for not only performance, but also for recovery. The next phase of hydration for us in the professional athletic community, and for anyone playing sports for that matter, is hydrating the, the airways. Like, that is the next big step. We've all seen singers drinking lots of water on stage. And there's a reason for that, because when you sing a lot, your vocal folds dry out. We're only now figuring out the drinking water and hydration of the vocal folds. It's not only good for singers, but also for respiratory health in general. So I sang the other day and I used your fence spray. Yeah. And I, like normally when I'm singing, I have to like chug water. Yeah. The whole session I'm burping in between takes because I'm chugging water so yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, I was just... Oh my God. There is a, a common understanding amongst scientists and doctors about the importance of hydrating your upper airways. And on the one hand, I'm excited that the, study, the studies are done, the science is there and it is widely known in, in certain uh, spheres of society, in the scientific world, and, and in some cases in, in the medical world. 
What I am frustrated about is it hasn't trickled down to you and I. And I feel like my job, my role, part of my job, part of, part of a role that I have is to connect those that I have been entrusted with, with this, I don't wanna call it this, but it's almost like this hidden wisdom that is vital to your health. Because the reality of it is, all of us, everybody in here right now, everyone watching via live stream right now, is breathing dirty air, is breathing bad air. And the studies show that breathing bad air, watch this, takes time off of your life. That, that's profound, and I, David is a scientist, and I, I'm blown away every time he speaks, but when you talked about how our lung, and I'm, I'm gonna mess it up, but our lung um, capacity is like, you said 10 tennis fields, tennis courts? It's the it's, it's size of a tennis court, yeah. So, tennis court. <laughs> so this is, this is like, like, so David rattles this off. There's a whole sector in society that understand this, that gets this, except us. And here is the truth. And I think that, that the solution is for everybody, but, but people of color are the last ones to know. And that's one of the things that I appreciate about you and, and what we're doing, and of course this is for everybody, but the most at risk, the disproportionately at risk community mm -hmm. It's people of color. Yeah, it, thank, yeah. Thanks for bringing that super important topic up. So I just want to share some statistics here. Um, Twenty nine years ago, there was a study called the Harvard Six City Study, where they studied people breathing in air with dirt in the air, small particles, and the number varied from ten micrograms per cubic meters to thirty. Uh, when we were in San Diego three months ago. Uh, the number was 50. And the difference in breathing, the 10 to the 30, was losing three years of life, right? Well, today in Bangalore, where we do a lot of work, the number is like around 150. And San Diego, we were on the beach, and it was like 50, right? And so we're losing, if you just project that, we're losing, it could be 10 years of life on the planet by the breathing of dirty air, and it's not fair. Some people are breathing worse air than others. So just to give you some other statistics, asthma has been rising among young people. So young people are especially vulnerable. It's important to understand that, uh, well, cancer, if you eliminated all forms of cancer, we would save around three years of life. <laughs> so why is respiratory disease so much more lethal? Because from the very first breath, you're breathing bad air. And when you're young, your immune system is not developed, and so the young people are especially vulnerable. And so uh, asthma has been rising for decades in this country among young people, and it's, it's hitting hardest black and brown populations, and by the way, uh, girls more than boys. I shared a story, and then you've been amazing uh, in responding to this. Uh, there's a story of a young girl, Ella Kisi Debra, who lived in East London uh, and who died in 2013 at nine years of age. She lived right next to a highway. And she was the very first uh, official death ascribed to air pollution. Ella, being a kid, being a girl, being black, is representative of the most vulnerable people on the planet right now to breathing dirty air. It's partly because where she lived it's partly a lot of stuff that we might talk about, but the main point is that it's not fair, right? There's an unfairness here in terms of the ability to breathe well. So we, um, I just wanna say that we, over the last two years, have brought out, this is work I've been doing for the last 20 years at Harvard University and, and, and other places, and the pandemic definitely accelerated things, and we have been, uh, bringing this uh, to about 30,000 people here in the United States over the last uh, couple years. Uh, we've been quite low-key uh, as we've been publishing a lot of science and getting to a point where we could be sitting here with you. Tonight, we're beginning a moment 
uh, in a campaign that begins with your community. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm super honored to be um, launching this with you, uh, a, a Breathe Better campaign to get our airways hydrated. It's a personal mission for me. The people who, on the planet who will be breathing the dirtiest air the longest are our kids. Bottom line. There's no one who needs to be better hydrated than our kids. I'm not sure if you all know that young people in this country are as a group dehydrated. We're just as a group dehydrated. And again, it, there's an uh, unfairness in who's more dehydrated than others. So it's a, it's a super important conversation. David, let, let's, I want to really drive it home and I want people to understand what are some of the common, um, I don't want side effects or what, what does having dry airways yeah. trigger? Yeah, how yeah. do we know we have dry airways? So uh, when you have dry airways, you get congested. <laughs> how many of you have seen the luge races in the Olympics? And when they get to the end, they get all this stuff coming out of their nose. What's going on? Well, you've had the experience. You go out in a cold day, maybe not much around here, but you go on a cold day and you run. And you suddenly get all plugged up. So what happens is when you dry, uh, it, your, 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 your airways produce mucus. And so you get congested, and that's why on a cold day you get congested. So dryness, you get congested. Um, why is it then athletes, uh, so again, working with Alex, it's, uh, I've discovered that professional athletes, and particularly professional football players, as a group, have massive sleep issues, sleep apnea issues, because they're so, it is now it's quite, quite well known that athletes, because you imagine, you're, you're perspiring, but then you're breathing in, you and I may be breathing 10 liters of air a minute, they breathe 100, right? That's when you run, you, you, you breathe 100 when you run. And so what happens, you breathe all that air, you dry out a lot. And so upper airway, issue, upper airway respiratory issues are the number one reason people go to a sports clinic, other than injury, 35 to 65%. So, it's, so professional athletes have major, so you dry out, you can't sleep because you get plugged up, you breathe through your mouth, and then you get really dry, and then you get a, a sore throat, and you get hoarseness, and then you cough, right? And so somebody goes for, like, exercises a lot, it doesn't hydrate for several days, they're coughing, right? And you may have had that experience. Um, well, the other things that, we, as, you, uh, as you dry out, um, you, the dryness goes all the way in your lungs, you get inflamed, and, um, and it leads to hypersensitivity, and it uh, leads ultimately to issues of asthma and COPD and, and vulnerability to infectious disease. So we, we, I think most of us understand that we need to drink our water. You know, my wife, Pastor Sarah, has a sl sl saying, somebody made a song, they need to give us royalties over that. <laughs> drink your water, mind your business. You heard that? that? No, she was, she was saying, she's been saying that for like four years. And somebody made a song. I want my royal. You see, if you find that person who did that song, just, just so she can send it to me, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Sarah with a small little fee. Um, but we all know, for the most part, the importance of drinking water. I had never even considered the importance of hydrating a very specific area, and that is this, this upper airway. And I just want to say there was amazing singers here before um, we came on, and, uh, and I know you, and obviously Sarah, I use your voice a lot. Well, singers know that really well, right? Why are singers, why, Mickey, listen to Mickey, why are singers like drinking all this water between uh, sets? And, and it, the, ultimately, it's not that their body needs or they're trying to get water here. And, um, and so the, it's not, well, firstly, you lose water two ways, to the outside environment and, or to your body. So you need to stay hydrated, 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 hydrated. But even hydrated, your airways can dry out. And so you need to both hydrate here and here. Okay, so... We're going to, there's, there's a special, well, I'm doing something, but I just want, I want there to be some takeaways for everybody real quick. So uh, I'm going to give a couple and you can give a couple. All right. So right now in this season, first of all, your immune system has to be strong. Like no more, like it's, we have to be serious about it. So we got to get sleep. I like to take vitamins. I, I have a little vitamin pack that I take that's strictly for my immune system. I don't know what works for you. I have zinc in there. Uh, there's D in there. There's C. But I, I'm, I'm working on my immune system. So that's two. I try to get as much sleep as I can. I take my vitamins. You know, I, I do that. Three, I try to drink. I, I fail sometimes at it, but I try to drink a gallon of water a day. 
right, to stay hydrated. Um, what are some of the other things that we can do? Well, I'm going to surprise you, maybe, but friends matter. You know what? Stress matters. Actually, um, we're, we're going to see a young man here soon. The village matters, right? So the health is something that you manage for sure, but it's something that you share with everyone around you. You know, you're an ex incredible example, Torre. Um, I think that the, um, so one of the studies, again, uh, that is incredible uh, scientific study showing that when you are stressed, uh, the clearance that I'm talking about here uh, falls. Suddenly your airways can't clear really well because you're stressed. It's just crazy, right? And so there's mental health, um, a support system, all those things matter a lot. We're going to talk about three things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, you said, you said um, because I don't want it to be lost on anyone. You said you use the words, it can't, when it's tight, when it's dry, it can't clear well. Yeah. What does it need to clear? What does it need to clear? So, again, you breathe, depending upon where you live, between 100 million and 10 billion particles a day. So just imagine those particles. That's a lot. Uh, those particles mostly fall out as I mentioned, on your nose, trachea. Uh, and they, when they fall out, they fall out on a mucus uh, that is sitting on these little things we call cilia that are just constantly beating this to the mouth, whether it's in your nose, to the mouth, or here, up. So when you inhale, let's say SARS-CoV-2, all of us have been exposed. All of us have been exposed to SARS-CoV-2. Some of us have been infected and some have not. But we've all been exposed. What happens? It falls out in your nose and here, and if you're well hydrated, it gets cleared to your mouth and you swallow it within minutes to a few hours after being inhaled. And so you may have been exposed, but you didn't get infected because it got cleared. And so you need the clearance to work, right? You're going to get exposed to bad things. If your airways are working well, they're just constantly moving it to your mouth, you swallow it, and you never know. And so that's what happens. That's powerful. So our body is designed... The our whole breathing apparatus and that whole mechanism is designed to, to flush those bad particles that we take in billions a day, literally, which is an astounding number. It's designed, when it's working properly, it's designed to move that through you. And I love that because the truth of the matter is any doctor, any real doctor will tell you that we're exposed every single day. But there's a difference between exposure and infection, and if your upper respiratory system is working properly, because it is hydrated properly, it mitigates, it, it reduces the risk of infection. So these are the things that I'm talking about as it relates to how do we do life now in this, in this COVID era? We got to travel, we got to move, we got to be, come on, we outside, that's the whole slogan now on social media, I'm outside. Yeah, you're outside with a whole bunch of particles. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Right. And so if we're going to be outside, then we have to be prepared to be outside. And that's why hydration um, and, and more specifically. And that's why I believe that what you have invented is so brilliant. More specifically, the hydration of that system that protects you, not just from SARS COVID-19, but a whole bunch of other things is working. Tell us about your invention. So I want to say a little bit about salt. See, we all know about salt. You may not realize that salt is critical to you being hydrated. So every living organism in the ocean or not in the ocean needs salt. And so what salt does in any tissue is salt sort of says, I need what, this tissue needs water or it has too much water. Mm -hmm. And so salt sort of is the policeman, if you will, of water. And so, so you go over there, you go over there. So salt plays this really important role. Um, so your body actually has all of the salts that are in the ocean. You know why that's true? Because there's more ocean than there is land. And ocean spray puts salt in the air, and so all of the salts that are in the ocean are all around our stratosphere. And everywhere you go on the planet, if you look at the salt deposit on the ground, you'll find that salt's from the ocean. So we're constantly breathing salts from the ocean. And so, in fact, there's four basic salts in the ocean. They're all in our airways. Uh, they're really important, and so those salts keep our airways hydrated, actually. 
So what we've learned, and actually this goes back to um, the anthrax scare. Some of you may, may remember that. Um, but right after 9-11, there was this anthrax scare. So I was brought to Washington because what I'd done for inhaled insulin. Anyway, it led to this observation about, you know, almost 18 years ago, that if you put salt in the airways, you can uh, hydrate them and, uh, and you can clean them out in various ways. And, uh, and so when the pandemic began, because of the problem of uh, airborne infectious disease, uh, I approached the FDA with my former advisor and it led to what we're about to talk about. So the invention, it's called FEND, it's salt and water, it's not any salt. It's one of the, particularly one of the salts in your body called calcium chloride. So it's calcium, right? It's, it's, it's a lot less, it's, it's about one five hundredth of the calcium you get in a glass of milk. So it's very little amount. We're talking about microliters of water. So it's a really small amount. Um, so it's calcium and water, calcium chloride and water. And it's sterile. There's nothing else in it. Uh, the, it got the salinity of about of the ocean. So it's more salty than you are. And the advantage is that it pulls water out of your tissues and it kind of keeps that water in the airways. Because of calcium, it lasts longer than if you were to put like table salt in. So, so you may do nasal saline, uh, you may have heard about that or use that, and that's really good, but it doesn't last for very long. So these are droplets that have just the right size that if you, I'm gonna show, so if just the right size that if you, so you, do that and it sprays this uh, so that these droplets have just the right size so that when you breathe them through your nose like that your four second uh, nasal inhalation it deposits about 70 percent in your nose and about 30 percent in your larynx and your trachea and so when mickey was saying oh my god there's this feeling what and singers that's what i've been amazed with singers is that they they feel what you and i don't feel they totally feel their larynx right and so you, this is yes it's going through your nose uh you need to hydrate your nose uh but it also you really need to hydrate your larynx and your trachea that's where most of the stuff that's falling out is falling there and your tra your larynx is such a vulnerable uh anatomy. Uh, it's obviously where voice comes from, but it also regulates air uh, uh, into your body. And so for athletes, when that dries out, you, uh, it really affects performance. This is, um, this is first of all, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, 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 it's science and innovation. Um, I think that science is, is awesome. You, you, you're, you're studying life and you're trying to figure things out. There's actually this passage that I think that speaks to what science is. Science done well is, and there's this passage in Proverbs, and it says, it is to the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's to the glory of kings to search it out. And it speaks of this unknown, right? God is, it's, it's concealed. Not that it's, it's, he's hiding it or God is hiding it, but it is concealed. There's something in the exercise, so it's to the glory of God to conceal, but it's to the glory of kings to search it out. There's something powerful that happens to us in the exercise of seeking out solutions to problems that science reveals. I need to say that better, I need to say that better, say that better. We have literally a device that mitigates the proven effects of breathing dirty air. We can't change the air right now. Listen, I, I have the utmost respect and I support those who are trying to reduce the carbon, their carbon footprint. They're trying to legislate to, to, you know, to keep factories from going up and do various things. I have the utmost respect. But what are you gonna do now? I don't have, let me tell you something. I'll be 50 next month. I don't have 10 years to wait for the air to change. I, I don't have that type of time, and neither do you. To be honest. If I was 18, I'd, I'd feel the same way. I don't have time to be waiting on some legislation or some person to change their behavior so that the air that I breathe is better. I need it right here at ground zero. And the, no, it's true. The, the brilliance of this and I'm that's why I'm moved by it, and I, I use it all the time. The brilliance is, yeah, legislate, yeah, come on, let's go green all day. You know, I got an electric motorcycle, and you know, I have an electric car, 
You know, I got another type of car, but I got an electric car. You know, I'm doing my part. I'm reducing it. I'm doing my part. And, and that's wonderful. But I need help now. And the beauty, the be- and, and let me tell you something, and I'm going to go super because it's true. I personally believe that, that God is pleased. That, that someone didn't just want to be smart to be smart, but, but wanted to be smart to come up with something. Man, I love this. Not all this, we, we live in a world full of talk. Everybody's talking. It should be like this. It should be like that. That's wonderful. But talk is cheap. Even the scripture says faith without works is dead. What are you going to do about it? And so we have scientists and innovators saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Green, green, green. Yes, I'm all for it. Hoorah, hoorah. But what can I do right now that the average, and look how small it is, that the average person can put in their pocket, hydrate their upper airways, and fight back against the world that we're living in. I salute you. I salute you. You know, I so can I thank you? It's amazing. But I, I want to just say something about how science works. A really good friend of mine, Danny Hillis, um, who invented the scratch screen, like on your Apple, like your iPhone, when you kind of scratch it. Um, he said something really brilliant. His he, said, he said, "For every his fr- <laughs> yeah, his friend it created the." Yeah, yeah. He, I need better so, friends. So, no, but he said, <laughs> "I'm sorry, I'm you know, sorry. for every invention that changes the world, there's like ten thousand people who had that idea." There's about a thousand people who really worked on it, and there's about a hundred people who've like dedicated their lives to it, and there's sort of ten people. Who, so basically, um, science is has not been, you know, scientists have not always done great things, right? It's, there's a lot of bad stuff that's happened, and and I think that some things, good things, do happen, and I feel super honored to be part of. Something as simple and as helpful as airway hydration, but I, I definitely feel like I'm one of many, and uh, and just kind of lucky to be sitting here. Well, well me too. I, yeah. I'm I'm blessed that you're here. Um, I love I love my community, um, and when I say my community, I, I mean those who God has entrusted to me, uh, and and the number literally is in the millions. Mm-hmm. You know, both local here in LA and beyond. And having you here um, to share with my community means the world to me. You flew all the way from Boston uh, to cut, it just means everything. And um, no, it's true. It's true. It's true. But then, if I can just throw it back, just so everybody knows here, I mentioned Ella Kisi Deborah um, a few days ago. So she, her mother, uh, is trying to build a monument in uh, in East London, and uh, your pastor um, put the money into the GoFundMe program to make that happen, right? And you didn't have to do that. It's amazing. Um, she was clearly blown away. Actually, it's an ama- amazing story. But you also, you know, you your story growing up in Watts and breathing dirty air, and, and you know, maybe you'll tell us all about that at some point. But as I've gotten to understand that, and the fact that you've wanted to give uh, effective breathing to 50 young people who uh, have breathing issues as you do, is amazing, right? It's amazing. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So as David alluded to, I just um, when I, I I learned the science. And I learned of the invention, uh, and I used it for myself and have experienced immediate results. Uh, For me, in my allergies, I couldn't even sit outside certain times of the year because my allergies would go off and I'd start, you know, coughing and hacking and it wasn't pretty. Uh, And literally, the the immediate thing that I felt was, it's almost like sometimes you don't know that you're breathing in bad air until you start breathing in clean air. Uh, that's the best way to put it. So that, I noticed that immediately that my breathing changed. Uh, it was almost like um, it felt more open and it felt more clean. One, two was the allergy thing. I couldn't sit out in my backyard um, when it was hot because the pollen or whatever, it's, you probably know exactly, but whatever the, the stuff <laughs> would get in my nose and make me hack and cough. That went away. All my kids are using it. And so I decided to, and this is not self-grandizing, I just, I just want as many people to get this insight, you know, um, and then get this, this um, 
to really have Finn in their life. I, I personally believe everybody in, their, everybody in the world ought to hydrate, ought to, to, to sleep well, ought to do all the things that we're talking about and that we're talking about, and I believe they ought to fend as well. But I wanted to gift a year's supply, um, personally, to 50 young people that were like me. And so, and I'm gonna have Ashley come up real quick um, because she'll give you some of the stories. But let me tell you, I, I started playing soccer. My first sport was soccer. And I played soccer in, in Oakland, in East Oakland. Come on, somebody, somebody said, Oakland, the Bay? Come on, come on, ah. Um, that was my first sport. And then when I came to California, my second, well, to Southern California, Oakland is California, came to Southern California, I started playing basketball at the Inglewood YMCA. Uh, and then I started playing football for the LA Sheriffs. You got, probably aren't old enough to know that LA Sheriffs had a football league. Nobody, you know, I'm dating myself. But they had a football league. And I never continued. I just, I started and I never went. And I didn't remember why until I started talking to one of the young people that, that we're going to, 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 to have a conversation with, a brief conversation with tonight. I stopped because I had asthma. And even though I enjoyed soccer, I enjoyed basketball, I enjoyed playing football, it dawned on me that, that joy was diminished by the wheezing and, and quite frankly, the terror of an asthma attack. I remember my mom in the middle of the night you know, I used to have asthma attacks. My mom is here. And, and I would literally think that I was going to die as a young person, 10, 11 years old. My mom's rushing me to Children's Hospital in the middle of the night, from Watts to Children's Hospital in the middle of the night. And I'm literally thinking that I'm dying. And I would get there, they put me on a breathing machine, and the mucus would break up or whatever. I start coughing and then I could kind of breathe again. And then the, the, the terror by night, you know, scripture talks about the terror by night. That was me. Uh, and then I would get shot. So when I, I heard about this and I learned that um, it can help some of these things, I said, I, I want to personally sponsor 50 kids. And so we got together, we got with, with, uh, with David, we got with the company, and um, after our conversation, the conversation that we had, who, by, by the way, um, was privy to the conversation that David and I had about a month ago? Was it, by a show of hands, let me see. Okay, so not just a few of you. You got to watch that. That's on YouTube. We get into even more detail. Um, but I wanted to do it. 50 young people. So we reached out. You know, we put the appeal out there. We put the offer out there. And, uh, and we got some incredible people that we're going to be helping. And uh, Ashley, can you maybe just give a couple of the stories? Absolutely. So one thing um, that I thought was really cool about the submissions was that we didn't want to say, hey, here's one year offend and then that's it. Um, but really wanting to journey with people. And so I really enjoyed just getting on the Zoom calls and really just connecting with people and being able to talk to them. And so one of the stories, um, I'll share three, uh, but there is 10 year old Olivia and eight year old Caden, both out of Atlanta, Georgia. And so I got on the phone with their mom, Shalandra, and they were uh, on Zoom as well and she was sharing how because there are factories that are being built around their homes that they're experiencing severe nosebleeds at night and for her she was like you know I've done the humidifier she's gone to the doctor she's had this conversation and so she was hoping that if there was any way to be able to really hydrate their airways then maybe you know this could be helpful. And so that was one story that was really impactful just simply because you could see these kids playing. They want to have a good time, but the factories and the air is just polluted and it's harmful to their airways. Another story was 13-year-old Danny, who was actually submitted by his teacher. So Danny has developmental disabilities, and his teacher's teaching him how to be healthy. You know, she's like, I want to teach Danny how to wash his clothes. He has a single mother, and she also has other children. And so she's like, I want to play my part as a teacher. Um, and so Danny, he gets ill a lot. And so in addition to that, he wants to play sports, but he has quite a bit of breathing challenges. And so his teacher was like, I wanna put myself out there. Legally, she's, she's not supposed to do it for the school district, but she had a conversation with Danny's mom and she's like, I think this will help. And so even for me, just the impact of community and being able to like see and understand how 
people are like, whatever I have to do, if this is a product that will help, if this is something that can help Danny play sports with his friends, then why not? Um, and the last story that I'll share is Brianna. She was actually one of our adult winners because we did have some adults. She's 27, she's out of New Jersey, um, and she leads worship. So Brianna has had acute asthma her entire life, and she developed, uh, recently was di not diagnosed, but she contracted COVID um, this year, which made her breathing even worse. She's been in and out of hospitals her whole life, and we had a conversation that was so impactful for me because she was like, the thing that I need, which is my breath, to sing and to lead people into worship has been just kind of disrupted by COVID to the point where it's hard for her to walk upstairs. And she was like, I have my faith and, and I've been praying and I believe God to be a healer. But when she was in her bed, she thought COVID was going to be essentially the end of just her life. She asked God if he could meet her in the middle. And when she watched the conversation on YouTube, she felt as though that was God really meeting her in the middle and really allowing her to try something that was practical. And so we received hundreds of submissions and we sorted through them, but in every single submission that we went through, we just, for, for all of us, I think, and for myself specifically, I realized that something that is such a luxury to us that we shouldn't take it for granted. And even Brianna, one thing that she mentioned before she got off the call was her just being able to say thank you because she thought she was alone and that nobody else had these issues. And so even the awareness of that has been impactful. Um, and today we have some people joining us in the audience as well. We have Kashan and Dason who are here from California. Hey, y'all wanna stand up, say hello, hey. <laughs> And then we also have Jakari and Kaylani joining us as well. And so let's say hello yeah. to hey, y'all. So Jakari and Kaylani will share more of their stories, but amazing stories that have come through and continue to come through. No, it, it's, David, you want yeah, to? Yeah, I just want to first say thank you so much. I mean, Ashley was on the front line, and it's amazing. Yeah. And I just want to say, to be really clear, that Fend is not a drug. Uh -oh. Right, so this is not a drug. So there's, and, and so it's important to understand this is really medicine is moving in the direction that drugs are necessary and vaccines actually are necessary. Living a healthy um, life uh, is everything else, right? And so it's what you eat, it's sleep, it's definitely hydration, and so this is a piece of living well and breathing well. And we're really hopeful that with the kids who are becoming involved here, that this will help them. And, and I think, uh, well, well, we'll get into the car. I just want to be really clear that, you know, that I think sometimes the things that are most helpful in life are the things that are most subtle, and so we're gonna have a subtle conversation. That's amazing, and for me, this, this Healing property, if you would, and healing in the sense that it restores the natural working order of what God started is not a drug. Look at what it is. Water and salt, <laughs> both which are natural. God put it out there in the earth and they, are, they have spiritual significance. We are the salt of the earth. <laughs> Come on. And water is symbolic of the spirit of God. Nothing profound can happen in life without going through what? Birth can't even happen without coming through water. And so wouldn't it be an amazing thing that, that it's redemptive, that, that that which heals the proper working order is not medicine in this context. Watch this. For the gift of breath. <laughs> and to think that, that, that just simply by breathing, just by doing what God gave you, you can be harmed. Wouldn't it be like God to say, uh-uh, not today, nor tomorrow, nor next week. I have a remedy if someone is willing to do the research, research and get out there and create something. And I believe, not just, you know, and we'll, we'll get to this in a second, but I believe there are ideas in you. David kind of started it off. I think there's innovation in you. Why not you? You know, if you're 
committed to, to do things that matter, I believe there are inventors in this room, but I want to call Jakari and his family up here. I want to talk to him. There he is. And Jakari's got four generations. His mom is here. His grandma's here. His dad is here. His granddad is here. And we were just talking about this. It literally, it does take a village. You know, and one of the things that I discovered when we put it out there and we were, you know, seeking to find people who could benefit from from a device that would hydrate their upper airways to help mitigate some of the breathing challenges that they, that they had. We were blown away. I didn't realize how many people were struggling. There's like this whole community of people out there that have been pretty much just locked into that. This is just how it is. You know, I think about me. I gave up on sports. Right. You know, but I guess if I would have went to the league, I wouldn't be standing here right now. So all things work together for good. But 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 how many people like how many people give up on their dreams because it just is what it is. Right. I don't know how to fight back. I don't know how to fight this thing. And so there's something I'm telling you, it, 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 this is it, it's bigger than science. It's bigger than innovation. There, there's something in this moment and there's something in in how we are looking at things and that is really, really divine. And I'm praying that it activates something in you that, that beyond breathing better, because everybody, in fact, we're, we've got a fin for all who want them, a free fin. We made sure, the company made sure, Finn and David made sure that everybody who came <laughs> will have one. So you're gonna be breathing better before you leave here tonight. No, for real, we're, we're serious. That's why I was so excited. Because I knew you were going to be blessed. All you got to do is get here. Tell your friend who didn't come, you should have came. Now you're breathing all raggedy. Okay. <laughs> Jakari. <laughs> How you doing? Good. You got your aunt with you? I love it. Uh, I just want to, and I know you spoke with Ashley, and we finally got a chance to talk today, but, but how, did, how did this Tell me how this came about. You, you saw the, the YouTube video, and then what did it say to you? Tell, tell me about your situation. Tell me about Jakari's situation. Okay, um, I'm Kaylani, and yeah, this is my nephew. I'm not his mom, so I didn't birth him. <laughs> but um, randomly, I woke up Sunday morning, the day that you guys aired the conversation, and I got a text. I don't normally get texts from the church about a service. Mm. Like, I literally woke up to the text, and I seen that it talked about breathing, which is right up my alley, so I was like, okay, I gotta watch this. So I had no idea what to expect. Um, but then in listening to it, listening to all the science and the education about it, I was like, wow, this is like really amazing. I would probably buy this product. Mm. Um, at the end, you mentioned that you wanted to gift 50 young people. And immediately I thought about my nephew, Jakari, um, because he does have acute asthma, but also just more so his story, which I can kind of share with you, like his birth story and what he's gone through. So Jakari's 11. He was born February 6, 2011, oh. and it was Super Bowl Sunday. Fun day, we were having fun. My sister's over there in the audience. Um, you know, she's a young mom. It's the first grandson, first son, first nephew. We're excited. Um, that evening, I remember being asleep. Obviously, it was a full day, again, Super Bowl Sunday, so you know how those days go. Um, full day of fun. I fall asleep on the couch, and I heard a scream. And you know the kind of scream that it's, it's crazy, because even right now, it's, I don't remember what it sounds like, but I remember what it felt like. Um, and I was like, I woke up out of a dead sleep and my sister was in the bathroom crying and screaming and she was like, something's wrong, like I'm bleeding. And so I run upstairs, I get my mom, I'm like, Kiara, it's my sister's name. Um, she's downstairs, she said something's wrong, she's bleeding. So my mom rushes her to the hospital, we're waiting for her to call us, my mom calls and she says, they're giving your sister an emergency C-section. Mm -hmm. At this point though, she's only six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. So he was born in February, he wasn't due until May. Wow. Um, so he's three months premature. They put her on the table, he's breached, his foot is completely hanging out of her. He's ready to come out. Um, so they give her an emergency C-section, we all rush over to the hospital, 
I see my sister, she's crying. My nephew was only born at like one pound. Oh. You know, imagine going to like the butcher and asking for like a pound of chicken. Wow. That's what he was. Wow. Um, so I remember his dad, his dad is here too. Mm -hmm. And he was the only one who was able to go into like the room where Jakari was in the incubator. And um, I remember he put his, like basically went to like go grab his hand and Ja, oh, we call him Ja, that's his nickname. So Ja squeezes his dad's finger, almost as if to let him know like, we got this, like mm -hmm. we'll be okay. Wow. So he gets airlifted to a whole other hospital where from Sacramento, so Northern California cool. too, South Bay area is San Jose. Um, they, like, the hospital's 40 minutes away, so even the first few weeks, my sister wasn't even able to see her son, because he's in a whole NICU unit that's totally far away. So for the first three months of his life, he can't breathe on his own. He's on a breathing machine. He's in an incubator. Um, there were moments where he had sleep apnea episodes, where, you know, he lost completely his breath. I think the longest episode was about, like, 57 seconds. So imagine a baby wow. not being able to breathe wow. for a full, that's a long time. When you, seven seconds of holding my breath, I yeah. was like. <laughs> <laughs> so 57 seconds, that's a long time not to have your own air supply. Um, there was even my sister, we were just kind of going over the story. We were talking about it, how there were six other moms in her unit. And one of the moms had twins, but one of the babies died from, like, I think, SIDS or sleep apnea. Um, and they had to go through therapy, because at this point, you're fighting for your child's life. You don't know, is my baby next? Mm -hmm. There were times where my sister was like, if this is it, God, like, if, if it's not meant to be, just take it from me, because I can't, like, bear this pain. Mm -hmm. um, he had hemorrhages in his brain. The doctors sat his parents down and said, there's an 80% chance he'll have cerebral palsy. He won't walk, he'll never really play sports. He probably, all the most terrible things that you can hear about your child mm -hmm. being born. Everything you don't wanna hear is what they try to prophesy over Ja, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, fast forward though, here's Jakari. <laughs> um, he plays sports. He plays the running sports at that. He's an excellent baseball player. He just started football this year. He begged his parents forever. They finally let him. So he's, he actually, he's actually really good, too. He's not like just one of those kids that just pay, plays to be on the team. Um, yeah, he's really good. So it's just when I look at his life and so when I've seen you mention it, it, like I said, it was a no-brainer. Because even now, like, there are some times where, like I said, he does have acute asthma. Um, I'll sometimes like watch him unconsciously, like almost like reaching for his breath kind of thing, something that he's totally unaware of. So it's still there. Mm -hmm. And I felt that anything can help. And if I can contribute, so I immediately, I, and again, I think it was divinely ordered. I woke up to a text saying, here's a message about breathing. I watched it. I seen you talk about, it. I want to give children. I didn't anticipate, I mean, I did anticipate. I knew you were going to choose us, to be honest. I, <laughs> I claimed that. Um, and so when I got that text that we got chosen, I was like, wow, he was excited. He was like, I've never won anything in my life. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just happy to be here because I'm happy for him. I'm happy he gets to experience. I'm just happy that as I watch him, I don't have children. So as I watch him grow older, just remembering what life was like 11 years ago when my sister first had him and just seeing like he completely defied all the odds. Oh, like, yeah. you know, he shouldn't be here, but he is. That is absolutely tremendous. And you have a, you have a, a wonderful family. I met, I met your grandfather, I met your dad, I met your grandma, I met your, your mom, I met your aunt, of course. Uh, it does take a village, and I love how we're rallying around Jakari. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I, I truly think that's, that's what it takes. And I'm trying to, even doing this, I'm trying to be a part of someone's village. So you ready to start fending? Sure. You ready to breathe better? <laughs> What, well, I'm just curious, what, what, what um, when you're playing sports, what, what's, tell me what that's like. Do you, do you struggle with breathing when you're playing sports? Do you, can you, because I used to be able to like go so far and once I hit a certain point, then I would have to back off. What, what's, what's your experience like with sports and breathing? So like, every time I play sports, I run, um, like something happens, like my heart, like, not my heart, but, like, my breath gets to start, like, shaking. I don't know really how to describe it. Mm -hmm. 
or it starts feeling weird. Mm -hmm. I do, feel do, like do you feel it here? Yeah. Is it, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to pass out and it's scary because I don't know what's going to happen next. But also, like, every time I do, every time, like, I do run, I have fun doing it. It's just, like, sometimes I can't feel my breath. Mm. Can I just, so, Jakari, this is all amazing. And so we spoke a little bit earlier, and so I'm sorry, everybody, but I just want to be the, um, just help you understand what's going on here. So when you exercise uh, in... And, and when you're dry, this thing right here, your larynx, it's it's, it's really small hole. And it opens when you breathe in, it closes when you breathe out. And when you're dry, it can actually sh go shut. And that's called exercise-induced asthma. And so when you're feeling like something's like quivering, that's what's probably quivering. And if you feel like you're gonna pass out, it's because you probably are about to pass out, actually. And so what this is going to help you do. And I just want to be clear to everybody, it's not like you get this like lanyard with it. It's like, it looks like it's a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, but um, we just put that lanyard, so you can put it around your neck if you want, but you don't have to. So anyway, but when, so what you want to do before you play sports is you want to, and we'll do this here, but you want to breathe in and really deeply. You probably want to do it three or four times right before you start to exercise. Okay. You want practice me it? Let me, let me show you. I'm going to do it. Okay. Firstly, you see that? I'm going to come next to you and just lean into it and kind of breathe deep. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty easy, right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> One of the things you can often feel is you're you start to get a little bit of a runny nose because it actually causes water to come in your nose. That's a good thing. Um, and so you want to do, when you do it yourself, you, you, and you can do it like that, or like that, whatever, whatever is easy. We also have small ones for, and if you want a smaller one, we can give you that. You probably need to do it two hands. Your, your hand's not quite big enough. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's about a hundred uh, squirts in this thing, and so it's about a month if you're using it three times a day. And if it runs out before you've got the next, you just send me an email, and you're going to get a box of them to your house. So there'll be no issues, actually. So yeah, you put it right, <laughs> you put it right about two inches in front of your nose. Yeah, squeeze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be afraid of it. It's like it's just like a sea mist. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. And and you want to get a little bit closer. You want to get a kind of a wet dog nose, like that. So, yeah, yeah. Shake your head like that. Exactly. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. It does there, take exactly. some getting used yeah. to. You want to get it a little bit. Sorry. You want to get a little bit closer. So it's see how it's like, like really narrow there. That's what you want to get in your nose. So get it close, close, close. Yeah, try it again. It's okay. You'll get so good at this. Yeah, you know, whatever. Okay, we're making you nervous. Okay, we'll do this later. Anyway, but that, that's the basic idea. So you want to do it before you exercise. And also you said this morning that you wake up often and you have dry mouth. So when we all wake up in the morning, that's when we're driest because we haven't had any water all night. And then if you're breathing through your mouth, it's all the worse. And so the, the, you want to have one, the one right next to your bed and then just get up and... Do that, and that'll actually get rid of the congestion and, and, and keep you hydrated right away. So morning, lunchtime, before you go to bed, we're also going to drink a lot of water. Um, and then when you think about it, because nasal breathing, we didn't talk about it, but it's okay, but, but nasal breathing is the proper way to breathe. So, so when you're thinking about it, Make sure you're breathing in, of course, with the fin, but just as you breathe, try to, when you think about it, try to make sure that you're breathing like this. Yeah, and one of the easy things to do is when you go to bed. When you go to bed, you, you normally breathe through your nose. And, and so what you want to do is fend before you go to bed so you have a clean nose and lie down and keep your mouth shut and breathe through your nose. Okay, yeah, I love it. Great. Very cool. Well, thank you. And then, um, you know, it, it's 
my commitment is is not just to you know get you fending, get your airways hydrated, and then you know I'll see you in a year. Um, I want to stay connected with the family and uh, and see how things are going, see how things are improving. Um, I think that you there's there's probably a call on your life. You know, and um, maybe the beginning of the calling is helping other people breathe better because it, it, it's a pretty uh, prolific issue uh, in our community. And so, uh, so we're going to stay linked and uh, I'm going to continue to, you know, send videos, resources. Uh, we're going to make sure that you are breathing better. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. We've got some for you. And there's some other young people here. We've got something. For, uh, for them as well. Um, we are about to wrap up. Um, if you, um, and like I said, for everyone who's here, we're gonna, we have a, a fin for you, so if you're, you're interested, not only do we have a fin, but we've got staff outside that will actually show you how to do it. Uh, and so you can literally start breathing better tonight. Uh, I encourage you to just, to be generous. It's, there's some people, you know, I was able to, within my budget, to you know, sponsor 50 kids. Um, you know, pray about considering sponsoring you know, a, a child in your neighborhood or somebody. You know, you would be surprised when you start talking about breathing how people that are right, sometimes right in your home, are struggling with breathing. I just want to encourage the spirit of generosity to, to really um, wrap your arms around somebody. And uh, this is a blessing. Uh, it's a gift. In fact, um, there is a discount for those. It, yeah, let me just make a really quick. So we have free product for everybody when yeah, you leave. You um, and so, and I'll be standing around. We can show you how to fend and all that. Um, there's a uh, uh, special discount, uh, and we're making it to everybody who joins the uh, the um, the campaign. Uh, representing kids or minority populations, and we'll give a really, really big discount. So if you go to breathebetter.world and you use the following code, <laughs> breathe better, uh, you'll get a really, really significant discount. And, um, and so I really encourage you to breathe better and uh, really um, feel free to reach out to me directly or through this guy and um, really look forward to um, what's next. Awesome. Come on, let's stand if you would. Um, David, thank you so much for who you are and what you do. I'm, I'm glad that we were divinely brought together. You know, um, I want us to be in prayer for David as he, you know, he's doing a lot of things. This is just one thing we were talking the other day and and uh, he, he's called to, to pioneer in that health space, in that science and health space. And I think that you know, every once in a while, God chooses somebody, he raises up somebody, he puts them in the middle of influence and power and science and various industries that will be a catalyst for significant shifts. I'm breathing better. My, my family's breathing better because of you. And so I just, I'm grateful for you and all the work that you do. Thank you so much for being here and giving us your time, your gift, your gift. Ah, it's different, you know, I just, as we prepare to close, I, um, my, my commitment is to give you everything I get. I mean, everything. Um, and I've been really, really blessed, like, like significantly blessed. God is open doors for me and and he's brought me in rooms and amongst people that are man the cream of the crop and if i get something that i know will help you and bless you i'm gonna share it with him i'm gonna run i'm gonna bring him right up in there and yeah i might not be sweating and hooping and hollering and sliding across the stage and jumping around that's cool maybe that'll happen next week i don't know but tonight is about you breathing better because i believe if you breathe well you'll live well and so um, take this to heart. I believe if you're here, if you're watching, if you're connected to this, you're connected for a reason. Who knows? Breathing better could very likely be connected to the fullness of your potential. Years added to your life simply because you pivoted and you shifted and you employed a new discipline. Or maybe it's a relative, an aunt, an uncle, a grandmother, that you got to put in their faces, just grandma, don't stop arguing, just breathe it, just breathe it deep in, whatever. It's that serious. 
And this is a blessing. It's not a drug. No hocus pocus. No, you know, rabbit in the hat. <laughs> None of that. It's just science, a pure heart, and consequently, innovation. And I just, I feel honored and blessed to be able to bring it to you. So um, on your way out, there'll be people who will fin for you. Uh, if you want fin, we have it for everybody, which is extremely generous. Thank you so much, David, for that. <laughs> extremely generous. And we're going to fin tonight. So God, we thank you for this night, this special night. And God, I believe literally, maybe even to the point of someone's life being saved or saved from great illness, being able to, to run on and do what you called them to do, maybe even literally run on because of what they've experienced tonight, what they've heard, nasal breathing, staying hydrated, sleeping well, hydrating their upper airways, all the things that make for the gift of breath that you gave us from the very start to flow properly and to do what it is designed to do. We thank you. We love you. Thank you for David. Bless him and his family and his works and his efforts. And I pray that the, the seeds that he has placed in this world through his inventions and his heart and we didn't even talk about the work that he's doing in India and Africa and all over the world. We pray that he would experience such harvest in his life. That every dream, every wish, every desire he has for himself, for his family, for his business, for his world, would not only come to pass, but that the, the harvest would be beyond what he was even looking for. And God, I thank you that his legacy, Lord, is a better breathing world. <laughs> I thank you you're going to do that, that his name will go down in history as one who took his talent, took his opportunity, took his resource, and didn't point it at himself, but he pointed it out towards your creation who you love so much. Great is his reward in this life and in heaven. And I thank you for all who are here, stirred not only to breathe better, but stirred to to be purpose oriented. And I thank you, God, of the same anointing and the same grace that, that rests even upon David to, to prioritize people and to ultimately prosper thereby would rest and fall on each of us. Cover us and keep us. May we all breathe better. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. See you Sunday.